Hello. The first thing to be said about this week is don't panic. Although it looks like there is a lot of work to complete, it is not as heavy as it seems. Many of the exercises are variations on a theme and much of this is revision. As such, once you get the basic ideas, you should be able to power through many of the programming exercises very quickly. In previous weeks, we have spent a lot of time studying the properties of random variables one at a time. This week, by contrast, we are starting to think about pairs of random variables and by extension, having multiple random variables at once. What you will hopefully see is that we've already learned something about pairs of random variables and multiple random variables. We have, for instance, considered the sample mean at length, which is a sum of multiple random variables. The random variables we construct a sample mean from are special, however, in that they are both independent and identical. The main thing we need to do this week is to get this notion of independence on a more solid conceptual footing. In other words, we need to give a definition that explains what we mean when we say that two random variables are independent and when two random variables are not independent. In doing so, we will see that it is critical to discuss the relationship between random variables. We will introduce three different methods for discussing how random variables are related. The first of these is to discuss the distribution of the pair of random variables using a joint probability mass function for discrete random variables or the joint probability density function for continuous random variables. These distributions tell us that the first random variable capital X is equal to a particular value and the second random variable capital Y is equal to a particular value. We thus have one probability for each possible pair of random variable values. The second method for discussing the relationship between random variables is the conditional probability. The conditional probability shown here tells us that the probably pro tells us the probability that the random variable capital X equals one, given that the random variable capital Y equals one. The third and final method for discussing the relationship between random variables is to write one random variable capital Y as a function of the other capital X as shown here. In other words, we can measure the degree of correlation between the random variables and account for parts of the dependent variable capital Y that are not correlated with the value of the independent variable capital X using a noise term delta. These various different ways of discussing the relationship between random variables are all useful in different contexts. In this week, the next, and in the remainder of your degree, you will learn how these three ways can be used to understand how random variables are related. To summarise then, don't panic, ask for help if you need it, and as always, good luck with the exercises.